This is an SM Media production. Hi folks and welcome to the second episode of the SM Media East of Scotland Football Show. I'm Scott McPike, it's an absolute pleasure to be your host as always. I'm delighted to be joined in this week's episode by the manager of Armiston Rangers, Phil Alexander. Phil, welcome to the show mate, it's a pleasure. Thanks Scott, it's a pleasure as well mate. Now nah, looking forward to this mate, how you been? I'm not bad, I, apart from Saturday's result, but we'll get to that. We'll get into that, yeah absolutely. Uh, I, want, I want to obviously ask you about the the kind of start to the season, like you. One time when you look at a league table, as you have got a, a kind of few games on games in hand on the the kind of likes of the teams above you, but it's looking already like a really tight league. But you have started fairly well, I would say. Uh, aye. So the thing I get my killer is like, see how you get like forums and stuff like that, where you get people saying stuff about predictions before the season starts, and that I was having a, a wee bit of chuckle because when we got promoted albeit by the skin of our teeth last season, but still promoted that we were um, expected to be relegation fodder and get scudded every single week on like numerous forums and stuff like that. So we've worked our socks off pre-season to prove people wrong. So, ah, you're right what you're saying with the games in hand, etc. I think I think it's knitting if we've got five games in name, but I think we can go above them if we win all the games. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So it is really, really tight and just the way the league is, Apart from, like, I would say maybe with the bottom two, who maybe we struggle, I think. If you win four or five games in a row in this league, you can just go right up the table. Yeah, it's, it's, one, it's, it's that thing, obviously, about how tight the leagues are. Like, if you can get a run going, it, it can just make all the difference and it can uh, can stabilise you. You are in a good run just now. You've won your last two in the league, beating Whitehill uh, 4-1 at home, then a big result, 3-1 away at least. You still haven't yeah. played in the league since the 11th, and I guess, I guess Saturday will feel obviously massive. Uh, aye, so we've been victims of in success, really. We did well in the cup, so it's been a bit of a pain because we have no good points in the table in the league. But as you say, the game's in hand, so it's good this Saturday to get back to the nitty gritty with the league game. So, but St Andrews will be a very tough test. Yeah, they're obviously doing, doing really well in the, the first division. Uh, what was your thoughts on Saturday? Obviously, it was a semi final with a cup, really big game. Up against a good side and, and bonus athletic, it ended up in a, a 3 0 defeat. What, what were your overall takeaways? Obviously, I, I kind of looked into kind of spoke to people that were at the game and they said that the bonus were really good kind of going forward, but they're also really solid at the back. Would you kind of go along with that? They were good at the back, I but here you know yourself, they're a really good side. Mm-hmm. But I, what I was disappointed for like my side of things was I didn't think we really turned up. I don't know if it was nerves with having too many young guys in the team or just the occasion got to them, I don't know. Because our front three weren't really at it, which like weeks previous they have been at. It. So it might just be an off day, something like that, I don't know. It was we done it right. The first goal was good that they scored. The second goal was like a shot for far away, like twenty five yards out, it deflected off one of the defenders and sent the goal the wrong way. And then the third goal was quite bizarre. So the ball got played to the back post and it looked like it was it. The linesman never gave it as it. Two of my defenders and the keeper are shouting it was it, but the boy dragged it back and then slipped it across the other side of the goals for a tap-in, but everybody stopped. So when they gave the goals, it was quite bizarre, but take that away for bonus, they're a really good side. It was a, uh, they were deservedly winners in the day. You just need to take it on the chin and get on it. It's a learning process for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. Obviously, it's a it's a difficult result, but it's it's one you hope you can learn from. Obviously, you've done really well in the cups this season. But it's been your kind of overall thoughts and your your performances. I mean, I look at, at last season, and it was it was a case. I mean, you didn't know you were up until obviously it was confirmed that when Lithgow were were going up to the Lowland League. So it was one it, last season. I think was a bit of a a weird season in terms of used that you did really well, but it was a really tight division. Like you know, you know that yourself. Right. But I think, to get into where you were was obviously some achievement. Yeah, I'm sure we got the news. I'm sure it was these two season game, the second last game of the season that we got news that if obviously Lonlifgod won the playoff, then it would be an extra promotion place going up. Yeah. 
So once we got that news, and then it was a, a local derby against Eustace's second last game of the season, which was some battle. They put up some fight and uh, we eventually come out 1 0 winners. Quite mm-hmm. a cagey game. So that sealed promotion, which then sent us up to St Andrew's last game of the season, we're just obviously something to play for, but we would already knew we were up. So the, the job was done. So it was quite good. Yeah. Going absolutely. up to St Andrew's for the occasion last game. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, we'll, we'll get into kind of the, the results over the weekend in, in the first division. There was only really one to talk about, but we'll talk about the three Scottish Cup sides who. I I thought we said this last week when we we're doing the show. It's difficult. It's it's we see with the draw. It's it's very very tough for those clubs. But all all we thought was give a good account of themselves, and they absolutely did that. Genefield Swifts come up short in a two 0 defeat uh, away to Clyde in the Friday night. Broxburn were denied in penalties, but Bucky Thistle and Dunbar United were denied in a two one defeat at home to Alloa. It was always going to be tough for those sides, but all all you can ask is they gave a good account of the league. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Clyde are a good side, so you can't take nothing away for them for getting winning two 0 against uh, Inverkeven. Broxbourne have been absolutely in scintillating form since the season started, and that went down to the wire. That was on penalties. It was that Bucky's won. <clears throat> so that shows you how close an encounter it was, and a really tight game. I think because it was a no one all full time, and then it went two one Broxbourne two all. Yeah, I, I was, uh, it was two goals yeah. in extra time. It's a, it's a tough, like, as you say, Broxburn have been flying, but Bucky Thass were a good side as well. So it was, it was a really good contest by all reports. Yeah. But when it comes down to penalties, it's, it's just no, it's it's a lot of sore. It can be so sore. And then Dunbar have been fantastic as well since the season started. Big Hainsey has got them playing really well, and um, very, very unlucky to get beat two one fellow as well. By yeah, all accounts, I was wasn't it the game. Yeah, what about the the kind of sides can kind I of get into the couple? We saw some brilliant results. We obviously Gene Field beating uh, Elgin was a highlight as well. It's, it's some focus in the league. Like we see that we we West Side as well. Like the, it's getting these sides into the Scottish Cup and be able to, to play at that level. It's, it can do them so well. And as I say, like if you can get like a good TV, like Musselburgh got a real got a really good TV night and things like that. It, it just does wonders for the league. Oh, it's just. It's, there's no such thing as bad uh, bad press, is there? So if you're in the press for the right reasons, then you're doing well for the whole East of Scotland. So you always want to see these two Scotland teams do well in the Scottish because they're flying the flag for everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get into talking about the action <clears> over the weekend. The Frost played a bit of a, a crucial role in the, the games. A lot of games were called off, so this will not be as long as a show is. Right, tell me about it. Was, we had an inspection at half ten. I seen that. There was, the a weird, there was a weird thing with Dundonald and, Blue, uh, Dundonald and Haddington. Was that game not called off at five minutes before the game started? I, I'm sure that both teams were there doing the warm-up, and uh, I'm sure the officials called the game off with five, ten minutes to go, which uh, Scott Bonner wouldn't have been best pleased going the way yeah. through there. No wonder, though, I mean, it's it's weird. I mean, the, like that is the thing. We know this time of year it's going to be very tough for games to be played, but give the give the teams plenty of notice. That's all we're asking. Yeah, like you know 100%. that yourself. You know that yourself. But I, I'll probably I'll probably say this: the two big kind of cup results in the the qualifying where Lunkarty Lunk- uh, Lunk- beating Pennycook five one at home. They obviously Lunkarty have a new manager. That's a big bounce for them. Aye, sometimes that happens when a team gets a new manager, you get a big reaction for them. But it's unfortunately for my big mate, Lewis Cole, who that he was on the end of a 5-1 doing for Lankarty. But yeah. it's maybe a good sign for Lankarty going forward because they've been they've been doing well, obviously, in the Scottish, but their league form's not been the best, has it? Mm-hmm. No, that's the thing. Like they obviously had a difficult run in the league, but a new manager can just spark them into life. St Andrews 3, Blackburn United 1. Did you have ended watching that game? Uh, nah, we know we've played St Andrews twice already last year, so we know pretty much all about them anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's that's always a big result as well. St Andrews, they get into the, the next round. Kings Cup, Whitehill Welfare, uh, one away, three two away to Kennaway Star. Here it was, beat Tweedmouth 3 0 at home. In the league, we'll start with the Premier Division, only one game to talk about. Tyne Castle, four, Cross Gates, one. We obviously had Rob on last week. Ryan Cameron, I, we like I have happy result, <clears> 4 1. Ryan Cameron, with a double. It's a big three points as well, as I say, like just getting that home result, the only game of the weekend, they'll just be hoping that that, that kind of moves them up and they pick up on that. It's starting to, it's starting to build on it to get the momentum going, so they've had a bit of a stop-start season, should they say. Yeah, absolutely. Where they've absolutely hammered somebody and been in the end and hammering themselves. 
They've had some weird results, yeah. I mean, there's, um, they've been, a, I think they beat, obviously, Pennycook 9-0, and I think they lost 7-1 the next week. So it shows you yeah. that inconsistency is just kind of doing them. But in, into the first division, I want to kind of touch on the first division for a wee bit because, obviously, you're kind of the, the best man to ask about the some of the teams in the league so far. Camelon, they did go top of the table, eh, but they would have, they would say it's probably a missed chance to, to kind of put a wee bit of breathing space. They drew 2-2 away to Kirkcaldy and Dysart. Mm-hmm. Jane will be Jane will be disappointed. They'll obviously be disappointed, but they'll they'll be, ah, they'll be disappointed because it's league. it'll be two points dropped as far as they're concerned. But Kirkcaldy's form's been brilliant. They they started off really bad. I'm sure they were in the bottom three at some point. Yeah. And then they've just slowly but surely, as I said earlier on, if you get four or five wins in this league, you just creep up the table. And that's what Kirkcaldy's done. I think Ross Ife's pretty much the same as well. They've been getting really good results and all. Yeah, so it's right. back to what I was saying earlier on. If you can get the four or five wins in a row, it's massive. Yeah, that top five looks very tight as well. Camelon sat top, as you <clears> still <throat> what Bonson Andrews, Newton Grange sitting with 27, Donny Pace in 25. What do you make of the kind of top five sides? Like, who you's like, you have come up against a couple of them. Like, anybody in that league can I really impress you? Donny Pace blew us away when we played them, but at their end, it was really good. They were unbelievably pressed. For the first minute to the last minute, never give us a second's piece and absolutely hammered us. Um, so they've probably been the best performance against us, I would probably say, so far this season was Dunny Pace. We've played Whitburn um, in the league and we've played them in the cup. We beat them in the cup, they beat us in the league. They're, you can what you get with them, they're a really good side. Uh, Darren's got them playing really well. Hamelin, I thought we should have got something out of that game, but... You know what it's like, you didn't it get the breaks. It was 4-2, wasn't it? Aye. When we got back to 2 all, mm-hmm. we had a couple of chances to like go 3-2 up, or even 4-2 up, if we obviously took the first one, but then we never took them, so that's football, swings and roundabouts. Uh, St Andrews, we know what we get with them. We'll, we'll see them on Saturday. Hopefully we get the three points. <laughs> and then uh, Nitten, uh, Nitten are decent as well. Uh, and, but we beat them 1-0, but it was... Ugh, I don't even want to be disrespectful to them, but it was 1-0 going on, could have been 5, 6 or 7 on that day. So they'll be looking for a bit of revenge when we play them in the end of this month, end of next month. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to be disrespectful either, but I'm looking at your, your kind of games that's been postponed and the two that jump out, obviously, away to Oakley and you're going to away to Vela leaving. Now, they are teams obviously in a real struggle for form, but... For yourself, when you've got those games in hand and you're up against sides that you, you should win, does that kind of fill you with, with confidence or is that a bit of, like, these are big opportunities, we must take them kind of thing? Uh, we, so we just take things like one game at a time. So we didn't like look too much into like, you get some teams that will pick out teams who think, right, that's guaranteed three points. We'll get mm-hmm. when we play them, that's guaranteed three points. And that. We're not like that at all. We One game at a time, week to week, try to get three points every single week. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the teams in the bottom, you're expected to be beating them because of where they're in the, the league. But it obviously doesn't work out like that every time. Yeah. You could have an off day and they could have an absolute blinder and then beat you. So it's that league's tough that we're in the first division. There's, there's a good like nucleus, a really good sides. But I think majority of the games that if you turn up on the day and perform, you're going to get come away with three points. It's as simple as that, but you just that's the hardest thing is trying to get the consistency of performing every single week. That's the tough part. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move <clears> into <throat> the second division. Fair. A few games actually took took place that weekend. We'll start with a big game I thought was still in University Reserves 2. Dilkeith Thistle 5. That gives Dilkeith a massive three points and they move yeah. into the promotion spots in third place. They actually overtook still in uni. That was a big game, but a massive three points for the buzzers. Aye, there was. That. So we played Dalkeith the week previous in the King Cup. That's right, yep. And uh, the pitch was absolutely horrendous at our end, <laughs> so it got cut up for the game on Saturday there. And uh, But Dalkeith battled really hard. We were quite dominant, I would say, in that game, but we come away 1-0, so taking that away for Dalkeith, so they're a good side as well. We've got some cracking players. But that's a really good result. 5-2 went, went away. Still in uni is a really hard place to go. Yeah, it certainly is. Thought and Habs, they had a good result. They won 6 2 at home to Ormiston and Primrose. They have always kind of struck me, Thought and Habs, as once they get a run going, they, they can put themselves in a really good position. They, they, I think, have got a lot of games to make up as well. I think, like, you obviously know them a bit for last season. What, what do you kind of think of them for this season? They're a really good side, but I think that was their downfall last year because right. they've done so well in the Cups, mm-hmm. which would like what we're doing this season. I hope it doesn't yeah. happen. Oh. 
because uh, they were running games they had and they were playing like twice a week for eight to nine weeks I think it was at the, at, like, the back end of the season Yeah, and it was just too much for their squad because they were sitting in the promotion place at one point and I think they just finished mid-table by the end of the season which was mad because they are a really good side yeah, I'm looking at their, their kind of run so far. Like they started with a, a six 0 home uh, away defeat to Till Keith Thistle, but they went on a six game on beating six game on beating round the league. They had a few postponements, and then they haven't actually. That was a first league one since the thirtieth of September. But they've I mean they've only played they played three games in November. They didn't have a league game in October, so they are a side as well. They could be in a really good position when you look. They've got three games in yeah. hand on Till Keith, and they're four points behind them. They could they've they've got a good goal difference as well. They're a side they're scoring a lot of goals as well. That's the one thing when you score a lot of goals, the goal difference can make all all the um, far yeah. pun intended. It can make a lot of difference. They're in a sort of similar position to us with the games in hand, but yeah, it, you need to win them. Eh? That's the hardest part. Yeah, yeah, absolutely do. But yeah, big taking that away from them. They're a good side. I'm sure. Did they know lose a couple of crossgates in the close season? I think. Yeah, sure, it was the top goal scorer for last year. I think they yeah, I think they've lost a couple of players. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought were well, they known about a turmoil at the, at the start of the season? Aye, as well, I think so. Right, but they turned it around. Aye, no, a big result for them, and big. That obviously can mean they can they can go on and kind of build on that. Big away back to these Coldstream and Edinburgh South. Coldstream one two now away to Edinburgh United and Edinburgh South a two one away victory over Newburgh. Big results again, as I say. Coldstream they're now ninth in the table. Edinburgh South that puts them up to fifth. Big away victories, as you say. If you're if you're going away, it can make it. It's, it's a massive three points. Well, I know Ainsley quite well. The manager Edinburgh South got on really good with him, so I'm glad that he's doing well with his side. They've been on a really good run of form as well lately. So any away win in this in, in that league's good, or in any league's good. Uh, Travel at Newburgh, we went there twice. Um, I think no, it wasn't it twice, was it? I think we played them at home in the cup, but we played them three times last year, and they were a good side last season. And uh, the crazy thing with Coldstream, I'm sure their manager packed it in after uh, they beat Edward United 2 0. Kieran Ainsley, I think, he's, I think he quit, <laughs> which is strange. I've not heard that, but I'll, I'll double check that. It could be. I'm sure I follow him on Twitter. I'm sure he said that was him done. He was going out on a high. I don't think that. Uh, they're, they're a side. No, I haven't heard anything about that. But man, it's, if, that's a, if that's the case, then best of luck to him. But uh, again, it's, a, it's not a bad. Kind of league either when you look at it, like there's a lot of tight sides. Like the three, the three promoted sides, they've come up and they've obviously started really well. Bonus, obviously, he's he's no well. Armadale have started well. Edinburgh College are in sixth. Again, it's it's a good look. Is it a good look for these sides? Like, for example, you you know a lot of teams that you played them last season, but I look at Tweedmouth. Tweedmouth were a side, obviously, last season. I think we're we're going well up to a point, but they've struggled this season. I think they've they've lost a few players. I think so. They've been struggling, but I'm sure they've had a management change as well. And they're sort of, I think they've been no grinding at results, but they've had a couple of decent results since the new manager came in. Uh, I thought teams like East Tooties, I thought they would have done well yeah. this year because they had signed a good few players, really good players for Dalkeith in the close season. But they started off quite poor as well. But I'm sure they're, they've went on a no bad run. I think I'm sure they won their last three. I think was it in the league, and then they drew with Burnt Island three all on Saturday there. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, Edinburgh been, South. been in the last three, yeah. Yeah, you've touched on Edinburgh College. They're a really good side. We played them uh, last season's pre-season and they were really good. Um, get the ball down and they played really good football. Um, your Armadales and your Bones, they were always going to be up there challenging, I think, because they've got slightly a bit more quality than the rest of the teams in that league, I would say. Mm-hmm. So it was always going to be like that, I think. But it's pretty much the same in our league. Whitburn have came up and they've shown their quality. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move into the third division. There was no games, but I want to get your kind of thoughts on what you kind of think. Like Bathgate, obviously, they, they're a side that you can expect it to do really well. Heart Hill Royal, they've been the surprise of the, the season. I didn't think they would be doing as well as Alice. Uh, they've, they've turned it right around because they were really poor last year. And I'm sure they've made a really a, a right good few good signings. Mm-hmm. And um, they've turned it right around. Bathgate are a good side. We played them in a hot cup, was it again? It was at the start of this season. And they knocked us with the cup. They beat us 3-1. But I thought they were really good. I was impressed with them. Um, so I think they might be up there challenging when it comes to the end of the season in the, in the third division. And I also think a wee dark horse might be Hoyk because they've picked up a right good few results. 
in the past couple of months. Yeah, I think Kenny has yeah. got them playing really well, so they could be a dark horse to get promoted as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, let, let's obviously look at the, the games. There's two really good games coming up this week, uh, obviously, just probably just before this goes out. Uh, East of Scotland qualifying, up th- qualifying Cup third round, Trinent versus Sockey. That's a big game. That's some tie eye. <laughs> Who you got? Who you, what, what would your, your thoughts be? Trinent at home at Sockey? Jinx Sockey? I would yeah, take Trinent all day long on that. And then uh, I think this could probably be the game of the week and across Scottish football. Bowness Athletic in the fourth round host Broxburn. Is that is that uh, tomorrow? That's that's Tuesday. Aye. Yeah. Aye, that'll be some game. Who can Bowness can Bowness challenge Broxburn? Uh, I've seen Broxburn against Muscle by the season at Olive Bank, so I don't know. It's going to be tough. I would I would say Broxburn. It'll be too much for them, I think, but I might be wrong. <laughs> be tough, yeah. Let's uh, I'll touch on the, the kind of games you've got coming up. A busy few weeks. Uh, obviously, we're getting into December. We're getting into a big stage of the season. Home to St Andrews, then the week after, you're away to here at what? Home to Donny Pace the 16th, and then Friday the 29th of December, you're host. Just looking at just away to Newton Green Star. So they're four tough games. Did, yeah, did you say that was Friday? Uh, no, sorry, that's the Saturday the 30th. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking there, like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. uh, aye, so I'm sure September, like on paper, was a really hard month for us with the fixtures wise, but we came out of that with four wins and a loss. So mm-hmm. December again is a really hard tie, uh, hard tie, hard month. So St Andrews at home, Herrick Water Way, which is two tough ties. Dunny Pace at home, so we'll be looking for a bit of retribution when we, we got a spanking for them. Over at their end, and then yeah. the derby on the thirtieth. He didn't really need much say much about that. That just takes care of itself, yeah. which will be a good day, uh, a good night after it. Hopefully, I have a busy, a busy period, and it's obviously a busy December. But uh, Phil, it's been a pleasure to be on, mate. Thank you very much for joining me, and all the best for the rest of the season. Right, never, mate. Cheers. Right. Thanks, thank you. Oh.